When we have a fast flow, a high Reynolds number flow, the bulk of the flow is essentially inviscid. Viscosity has little direct impact on much of the flow. However, if we look very closely at the flow near a boundary, we see there is a thin layer, the boundary layer, where the essentially inviscid flow adjusts the no-slip boundary condition of a viscous fluid. Since this layer is typically very thin compared to the overall size of the object, the boundary layer will look quite flat on the length scale of the boundary layer. In the following, we will assume that the wall is flat and that we will use Cartesian coordinates with the wall in the plane y equals zero and the exterior flow is parallel to the x-axis. We will also assume that the variation in the flow in the boundary layer along the wall will be on the same length scale as the object, much bigger than the length scale of the boundary layer thickness. Also, the flow will be essentially parallel to the wall, so the component of the velocity away from the wall will be much smaller than the component along the wall, both inside and outside the boundary layer. We assume the flow is both Newtonian and incompressible. Thus the equations to be solved are the continuity equation and the three components of the Navier-Stokes equation. The first approximation that we make is that the flow is two-dimensional. It is independent of the z-coordinate and is parallel to the x-y plane. This means that we can remove all terms involving either w or partial derivatives with respect to z. The second approximation that we make is that the flow is time independent. This means we can remove the two terms at the beginning of the Navier-Stokes equations involving du by dt and dv by dt. The third approximation that we will make is that the y derivatives are much bigger than the x derivatives. This isn't much use in the continuity equation because we don't know at the moment the relative sizes of u and v. It will turn out that u is much bigger than v and so these two terms will be roughly the same size. However, in the viscous term for the u component of the Navier-Stokes equation, we have a d squared u by dx squared term and a d squared u by dy squared term. We would expect the d squared u by dy squared term to be much bigger than d squared u by dx squared, and so we will remove the d squared u by dx squared term. In a similar way, we will remove the d squared v by dx squared term in the y component of the Navier-Stokes equation. The last approximation that we will use is that u is much bigger than v. We have already seen that d by dy is much bigger than d by dx, and so in the continuity equation we end up with a balance between the du by dx term and the dv by dy term. If we compare the terms of the Navier-Stokes equation, we see that the terms involving u and v in the top equation should be bigger than the corresponding terms in the second equation. However, our argument that y derivatives are bigger than x derivatives would indicate that the dp by dy term should be bigger than the dp by dx term. This means that the dp by dy term in the second component of the Navier-Stokes equation should be much bigger than all the other terms. This is only going to be possible if it is essentially zero. And so the second equation will reduce to dp by dy equals zero, and so the pressure is uniform across the boundary layer. As the pressure is uniform across the boundary layer, it will be the same as that of the exterior flow just outside the boundary layer. We will denote this pressure using a capital P, which will be a function of x only. We can replace the partial derivative of P with a normal derivative. In the exterior flow, which is essentially inviscid and parallel to the wall, we find that just outside the boundary layer, we will have the balance that u du by dx equals minus 1 over rho times dp by dx. This means we can replace the pressure term in the x component of the boundary layer equation with u du by dx. We use a capital U for the x component of the velocity just outside the boundary layer. Thus we end up with the boundary layer equations. To complete the problem, we have to have boundary conditions. At the wall, we will have the no-slip condition, so u and v are both zero. Away from the wall, the boundary layer flow will have to match up to the exterior flow. So we require that the u components of the velocity in the boundary layer will tend to the u components of the velocity in the exterior flow as we move from the wall. Mathematically, we will require that little u will tend to big u as y tends to infinity.